Today we are going to be working on a couple of things. Uh, one of those things is restoring or bringing back to operation an IBM Personal System 2 Model 30. And part of that is to get the proper original monitor for it, which we actually did find in a warehouse find during one of our scavenging hunts. This is it. It's the IBM 8513 Personal System 2 color monitor. Right now I'm mostly interested in does this monitor work as is and are we going to be able to use it. Alright, we're going to try to turn this monitor on. The first test proved that the monitor is capable of putting something on the screen. Granted, there's a vertical height problem and uh, there's definitely some roll in the screen. We've proven that the monitor works. Whether we can get it back to a point where it's actually showing a full height screen, I don't know. I have to do this because, you know, I've done this with monitors before, but... Hey! So this is the IBM PS2 Model 30. This particular example is in pretty rough shape. You can see there's evidence of rust, dirt, grime. It's uh, not a shining example of an IBM PS2. However, it is the only PS2 Model 30 that we currently have, and they're covered in rust. We've got all four screws loose, so let's go ahead and pull the cover off of this guy. Actually, if I'm honest, it's not terrible. Yeah, the board itself looks clean. It does appear that it has a hard drive. And it does appear to have a removable top, which is interesting. Some of these early drives, you can actually open them up and get to the platters. It's got RAM installed here. Looks like two, two socketed RAM chipsets there. Stuff like this always makes me happy about old computers. Mechanical linkage. The front, front panel power switch actually operates this remotely with a physical mechanical link. To the power supply. I guess uh, we'll get a just a standard flat panel monitor to, to test it with. Let's give this another try. Yeah, so the hard drive's toast. Either we're going to have to create an original IBM DOS boot disk, but we'll have to find another machine that has a drive capable of writing to that format. We should be able to get this machine to boot up. It passed the memory check okay. I mean, I think we've got a valid test candidate at least. All right, here we go. Load drivers for PC support, load drivers for Novell. Well, isn't this interesting? We got it to boot up, we even got a C prompt. Yeah, there it is. IBM Personal Computer DOS version 3.30. I mean, it's able to navigate through the disk, it just can't load the files in the initial menu. There's a real good chance, though, that, if, that this may be the only time this disk reads. <laughs> I think I was right. I think that was the only run we're gonna get. We were unable to get the original hard drive to work. Unfortunately, after a little bit more analysis and trying to get that drive really up to speed, it wasn't going to happen. We ran extensive tests, we ran utilities like Spinrite, which I had forgotten about for years, and ran through all of its courses. We even let the thing run for a 36-hour period over a weekend with Spinrite, trying to get the drive up to par and it just wasn't going to happen. Every other sector was a nine, which means nine or more errors, which uh, is not what you want to see. Even tried swapping out boards with the first drive. We tried oiling the bearings. We tried oiling the actual stepper motor that is that controls the head for the drive. That also didn't work. We couldn't bring that drive back, and ultimately, after many tests, that one just mechanically wouldn't come up to speed. For the purposes of Vintage Geek, we really want an authentic experience. And for me, that means the sounds of the original computer. You just can't get that with a compact flash card because it doesn't make any sounds, and these original hard drives make some pretty cool sounds. So what we did is we went on eBay and picked up a lot of four of these hard drives that someone was selling, and we've got them all in this box, and we're going to try them out and see if we can get any of them to work today. We've got our original drives here. This one in the middle is actually the, the very first drive, the one that was physically in the machine. And over the course of all the testing, we've now completely dismantled this drive. This is the second drive that would not fire up at all. Mechanically, it was like the head was stuck. So uh, we had to give up on that one. So uh, we're going to take these drives out. 
And I will say rather conveniently with these drives, these all came out of PS2 computers, so they actually do have the original plates on them so they can slide in and out of the machine. I think it might be fun to uh, have a little bit of a fun game to actually pick which drive we're going to test first. So I brought out this handy dandy spinner from a board game that we had uh, hiding in the Vintage Geek closet. This one's from a game called Bargain Hunter. It's got eight numbers on the spinner. We can probably just label each of these drives with two numbers and then we can uh, spin the wheel and see which one we're going to be uh, checking out first. Looks like we've got a number five and uh, this thing has some kind of a credit card reader on it so let's see how that works out. It didn't seem to move but it does say credit approved so the number five is actually the first drive that was one and five so this is going to be our first contestant today and see if we can boot up this ps2 with this original hard drive all right first drive is installed i'm really glad they have those sliding rails on those drives because it's going to make the process a lot quicker All right, so this drive is making the appropriate sounds, but we are getting a fixed disk drive error. All right, let's take a spin and hard drive roulette. Attempt number two. All right, number four. Hard drive number two is ready to test. Yeah, so this drive, I'm not even sure if it's, I mean, it is spun up, but uh, it didn't do anything. Like, there was no, no head movement at all. Let's, let's try to see if we can turn it on again. So the hope here is that with one of these drives that it will just automatically boot up, that we'll hear the head do its little initialization pattern, and then once the computer does its memory check, it's going to try to boot it normally and you can hear the drive accessing and not go into a fixed disk error like we've seen so many times. Let me say we take another spin. Two. All right, here we go. And it appears this drive is not even spinning up. Yeah, there's no, there's no physical movement in this drive. So it would seem we're getting progressively worse. We got one last drive to test here. We don't have to spin for it because uh, there's only one left. Well, that drive actually spun itself up and then just spun itself right back down. <laughs> just sounds gnarly. It's got that kind of sound like something scratching against the head surface. It's not exactly four duds. The first drive that we had actually did sound proper. So that's probably our best bet to start with is see if we can bring that one back. So I've got a disc I made of the IBM Advanced Utilities. We used this in testing the first drive. So I figured this would be worth a shot. Access format complete. Now the question is going to be, can we do a surface analysis because the manual seems to recommend that's the next part of the process. So far it's moving slightly faster than the first drive did. That sound that it makes when it, it's like it's trying to seek and it gets stuck on one of the cylinder counts, it did that all the time on the first drive. And that corresponded to what it looked like in Spinrite too with the nine surface errors each time. So we're about an hour in at this point and we're just wrapping up this surface analysis on the drive. It's done considerably better, at least from a sound perspective, than the very first drive we ever tried, because the very first one took a lot longer than this, and also it had a lot more of the kind of stuck positions where it just kind of waited. Um, this one has gone fairly smoothly. There's definitely been some stops along the way, but uh, I'm hopeful that uh, this will end up working. Now we've done this with the drive, I think we need to try to see if we can just use an F-Disk utility to actually put a DOS partition on it. So I'm going to physically turn off the machine, put in my original PC DOS disk from IBM, 
And we didn't get a fixed disk error that time. That's a good sign. Let's run our F disk utility. All right, so that did take some time, but the format did complete and it says the system was transferred. So now for the moment of truth, we were able to successfully format the disk. We put the system on it. Will we be able to boot this PS2 from an original PS2 hard drive? Let's find out. Aha, it's asking for the date and the time, which I'm still not putting the correct time in. We got it. We got a computer that boots up to the original hard drive. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and run Spinrite on this drive, just because I want to make sure that we don't try to write any data to any of the bad sectors. And that's what Spinrite really does, is it makes sure that it marks everything on the drive that's a potential problem so that nothing in DOS or the operating system will try to use those bad sectors, which ultimately makes the drive last longer. And we'll get it started here and just let that run probably overnight. So in the end, it looks like hard drive number five was the winner of hard drive roulette. The good news is that after a number of different experiments and different hard drives, we finally have an original hard drive that will boot. So I thought it would be kind of cool to try to install Windows 2.0 on this particular IBM machine because it is the right hardware for it based on the specs that it required at the time. Now, in order to do this, I had to get the disk images from WinWorld PC. We don't have a box copy of Windows 2.0 yet. It's on our wish list. Grab some image files, put them on a USB flash drive, and then I had to have an intermediate step in order to get that to a physical floppy. In this case, I'm using my 1998 Toshiba Tecra laptop that I've had since it was new. And I even have the original external floppy drive for the, uh, the laptop, which is pretty handy in this particular case. I'm using a program called RawWrite, which is basically a utility that can write image files to a floppy disk from earlier versions of Windows. I've got these fresh 3M floppy disks here that are uh, ready to write. Something really satisfying about opening a brand new package of floppy disks. And they even came with this cool label sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, label the disks this time and make it a little bit easier for me to find what I'm doing next time. And uh, we're going to write some disks. All right, so we've got our set of five Windows install disks for Windows 2.0. We're ready to give this a shot, but I just realized that we're missing one important piece to make this all come together because when you use Windows, you're not just going to use the keyboard. We need a mouse. Just so happens. And in another auction, a lot of things that we got, we ended up with an original IBM PS2 mouse. So uh, what better opportunity to use this than with installing Windows 2.0? All right, so we're gonna start with disk one. I'm actually not even sure if this has an installer or if you just have to copy it to the drive. Oh, yep, there is a setup EXE. So we're gonna run that. Ah, uh, yes, C Windows. The same path that is still used today. Oh wow, it actually knows the system. IBM Personal System 2, model 25 or 30. Now we have to pick the display adapter. The very first one is the right one, IBM MCGA, so we're gonna pick that this time around. All right, let's see if we can have a winner this time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, mouse works. Oh, this is great. Let's see what the paint program looks like. So it's been a lot of work, but uh, we do now have a working Model 30 IBM PS2. And uh, not only do we have a working Model 30, we have the Trackstar card installed, which was in another video. We also have Windows 2.03 installed, and we have an original IBM PS2 hard drive that is functioning, albeit with a few bad sectors here and there, but uh, it is functioning and working pretty well to run this old version of Windows. So I think this machine is now ready to be placed into the museum, and 
We really want to thank you for watching us go through this process as it's been uh, quite a few steps along the way and uh, quite a bit of fun as well. It brought back a lot of memories and doing old installs with Windows and trying to get hard drives to work. There's been a lot of steps that went into it, but it's been a heck of a good time. If you like what we're doing here on Vintage Geek, make sure to like and subscribe. It's going to help us as we go forward. And be sure to tune in for more videos on the channel.